I think we need to be very careful that we don't take that off and all the springs and everything fall out. And um, we need a selection of small flathead screwdrivers. Well, small medium flathead screwdrivers. This is a Compton style relay system from an old extension organ of some sort. Um, which in our case we're replacing with a tiny Arduino. Talking to myself. Talking about me? Yeah. Slagging you off in the camera so you'll get you'll find it when like when you're editing. Yeah. We'll send the camera in first in case there's danger. <laughs> which there's likely to be. Yeah, I think like the bloody um two to come in two minutes. A bit like a, what, what can you see? Because you're Howard Carter, yeah? Yeah. What can you see? You got looking at Scarab beetles. No. Isn't it? Endless treasures. Endless treasures. And a mummy. How does it look? I think we've been hard. You know, what would be absolutely lush would be if we could split this into two chests. Mm. Um, how long's the dust? Body. Yeah, it's not two chests at the moment, but it. I wonder if it would be possible to split it along the centre line now, mm, and make it into see. two. Yeah, let's see why not. Well, how long's the? Um, Externally, it's four meters, pretty much exactly. So you wouldn't fit two of these long along it anyway. Well, we can measure out the, the primary action in there. You know, we we need to know how to get to all of it. You know, if we turned up at a major show and found that we needed to getting and do some emergency mm. re-leathering overnight one night. We don't want to be scratching our heads about how we dismantle the thing. So even if we don't make it so it rotates, we're going to have to make it so that it w it's not going to be enough just to reach under and get to the magnets, is it? We're going to need more access than that. I wasn't towing when we flipped the Land Rover though, just to... <laughs> Richie was towing then, I was just sat in the passenger seat being terrified. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> this is our second official road trip. Yes. On the same road. Make a witty comment, bro. Um, yes, go and pick an organ for that, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Highways England will have the motorway open at 7 o'clock, they said. Mm. We have plans for dinner and everything. Yeah. Well, we'll still have curry tonight, one way or another. Even if we've got to drive to London and get one. <laughs> at least we didn't pick one up in Bradford. No one to crash into now. There's the ditch. Dustbins. Well, this is the final leg of the journey. The trailer has survived. The, uh, the two Mark and Max have survived. We've got an Indian takeaway, and uh, what else has survived? The, the, the Bilingo survived. Hopefully, the organ. We has an organ on the back, and, a, and an octave of pipes. Yeah, an octave of eight foot pipe. That's nice. So, uh, yay! Project also. Awesome. <laughs> right. So, see you next week. Yeah. See you next week. I might see you next week. Yeah, for Tetra. Yeah. And uh, let's never use spring water or anything. Yeah, well.
So we went all the way to the other end of the country. We met a nice chap called Luke, and with a bit of huffing and puffing, managed to extract from his garage this and these. And we're very happy about it. <laughs> but what is it? What have we actually got? Well, to power the pipes, you need a wind chest, which is a box full of air, and then it has valves in it. The valves open and let the air through into the pipe that you want to sound. Our one note organ has a box underneath, which is a wind chest. Um, both of the current ranks of pipes are mounted on wind chests. The next stage of our project was to build a big wind chest to carry multiple ranks of pipes. And that's what this is, <laughs> which is great. So if these parts are serviceable, and it is a big if, uh, this will provide a huge leap forward in, in the project, which is great. As a bonus, we've got an octave of great big pipes, which will provide some of the bottom end of our sound. So that's a, a massive boon as well. This one. I can, I can sound this one. Here we go. <laughs> we'll be exploring this in detail, no doubt. More detail than anyone could possibly want. So for now it remains for me to get all this under cover safely out of the weather and um, wait for Mark to come down and make some sense of it all. Okay, I've got the action out of the uh, chest here. So there's the magnets um, along one of the four chambers. We've got uh, the others all still attached. Um, magnets themselves uh, all seem okay, but here we can see the uh, the sort of primary uh, pneumatic motors. The leathers are all in excellent condition. I'm really quite pleased with that. Um, and then here you can see the the sort of final stage of the action: the power motors. Um, these holes here line up with these holes uh, here to exhaust these motors and then open the main pallet valves in there um, which then allow air from this chamber into the pipes and to be quite honest having been used to working on uh, organs that are very much well very much older than this this is in uh, absolutely excellent condition um, I think there's quite a few years life left in that leather yet um, I really have every confidence that if we just uh, uh, connect these 244 cables down here, um, these wires up to our control system, power it up with some wind, stick some pipes on it, we're going to pretty much be in business straight away. There's going to be very little work that's going to need doing on this um, to make it quite good, um, which is excellent news. I figured that it's entirely possible that um, uh, you might want a quick rundown of how this system works. Um, also, uh, I don't think Max actually knows properly, so I think maybe if I now we've got the thing in bits and we can actually see the action, I'm going to have a quick run through of, uh, of what happens here. So, each one of these magnets, when it's energised with the action voltage, which will be around 15 volts, something like that, um, they uh, it has a. Uh, if, you, if you look down here, you'll see there's a electromagnet coil gubbins down in there. So when that's actuated, um, that opens a little valve in here. We can, um, I could actually show you the one of the valves. Um, they're really difficult to undo. But anyway, so it's a little valve that normally is in a position where wind goes from inside this chest, because this would be connected onto here, um, is able to pass through here and inflate this little pouch, little leather pouch. So that's the normal off state, it's fully inflated. When you energise this magnet, it flips over the little valve, pulling the valve down into the magnet, opening this exhaust port here. When that exhaust port's open, the pressure of the air inside this chest collapses this, this little pouch. The, the actual movement is tiny, it's probably what, a couple of millimetres? What that then uh, uh, happens, it, slightly bigger valve than this in here, a little changeover valve that goes from when it's in its fully inflated state, when it's supplying air 
through these holes, which correspond to these holes, filling up these bigger pneumatic motors, these bigger pneumatic pouches here, I'm just hinged at the back. When this is activated, when the, the uh, uh, solenoid is activated, this collapses, allowing the air to exhaust through these holes, thereby collapsing this motor, and I don't know if we can make it out in there with the, the light, but um, opening that valve there, which allows the air from, from this, this chest to make it into the pipe. So this is sat on its side at the moment. The pipes sit all along this top surface here, and this chest itself uh, has space for 244 pipes on it. And that is the basics of how um, this kind of um, twin stage electro pneumatic chest works. Um, it's, uh, it's quite a work of art, absolutely lovely bit of kit. Yeah, you can see here where the um, where there's been the water ingress, um, this particular pallet, and there was a couple of others, the, um, the this would have been done with a, a sort of water-based glue, like sort of um, animal glue, and it's the, the, the pallet materials actually ended up stuck to the chest, so it's come unstuck. It's in good condition, it's not really bad, I don't think it needs re-leathering, but um, you know, this definitely needs gluing back on, which makes us have to decide whether we're gonna use animal glue again, go traditional, or whether we just go with the trusty Evo stick and have done with it. Um, so yeah, a little bit more work than we expected, but not, not horribly so. should have a number on it. Two. Good. Um, yeah, so before we drop it in, let's just double check those wires. Um, I'm replace with those yellow ones. I mean, this is why it's entirely possible, you can see where they've been trapped under the gasket, but this is why it's entirely possible that this is all gonna have to come out again because uh, I don't know what state this wiring's gonna be. I mean, that's all bare there, isn't it? Yeah, that's just shit. So, you know, we'll just bear it in mind, it might need to, have you got that? Yep. Um, we might need to do some jiggery and poke through with that. With the inner gubbins. Right, same deal really. Uh, if you look at the... Um, the blanking holes. Let's try and get those lined up at the beginning. That should just mean the screws are lined up. How's that? 